Welcome guys to the final episode of our four part series. In previous episodes we covered fishing for pike during spring, summer and autumn. And now we will dive deeper into winter. Targeting winter pike, big and small with a variety of techniques. Winter is perceived by many as being notoriously tough. Slow days and cold weather. Yet when you find them and they're in the mood, magical things can happen. Especially if you aim for kilograms instead of centimeters. Winter is the time of the year to crush those personal bests in weight. But also spots that are usually very hard to fish due to vegetation are now much easier to fish. And with these tips, tactics and techniques, we will help you fish successfully for pike during winter. Let's go! Depending on where you are located on the globe, winter weather can vary from icy lakes covered in snow to something that feels like a never ending autumn. Dead bait fishing can be super effective, either through ice fishing or on spots where the water is still liquid. There are plenty of videos out there that explain how and where to fish this technique, but in this video we will focus on the more active techniques. Specifically for this video, slow trolling, casting from both the boat and the shore, and pelagic fishing or sharpshooting as some people call it. But first let's dive a bit more into the winter behavior of both pike and the prey that they're feeding on. When the water gets colder, most of the fish migrate towards the warmest part of the water system that they are in. As explained in the autumn edition of the four seasons of pike fishing, sometimes they migrate towards sheltered areas like harbors or underneath bridges, and sometimes they migrate towards the deeper parts of the lake, as it offers them more comfort. As in winter time, the top water column can be colder than the water closer to the bottom. Harbors can be great spots for dead bait fishing, but not really suitable for casting, as you don't want to risk damaging other people's property. Let's dive a bit more into a big open lake as our first example. But before we do, keep in mind that even during winter time, fish behavior is never a simple mathematical equation. There are always exceptions. Even after two intensive decades of pike fishing, I still get surprised by fish not playing by the rules. Most fish will migrate towards the deeper spots, where both predatory fish and bait fish like roach will gather. Brim are usually around the deeper water too, but they have the tendency to be a bit more active, and thus also more shallow. Especially during calm days, they tend to rise more towards the surface, even at low water temperatures below like 3 degrees. They like to be close to the drop offs towards the shallow water. This is also something to keep in mind when searching for pike, especially the bigger specimen. Let's kick it off with some slow trolling action. This is a deadly technique for deep water. We have to slow things down enough to be successful. Now, the low speed has two main reasons. You want to reach a certain depth, but you also want to give the pike enough time to come up and snatch your lure. There's a limit though to how deep you can troll without adding extra weight or using a downrigger. More on that later in this video. Speeds between 1.5 and, and 2 km work well, thus you will need lures that are effective at low speeds. The burbot works well, the 36 cm and the 50 cm, and both can easily reach 10 meters when trolled at low speeds with long lines and thus are perfect for these kind of techniques. The rattle trout works well at speeds around 2 km an hour and the 27.5 cm version is great but it is the minimum size that I would pick for fishing above deep water. Besides the ability to run at low speed, you also want to have a lure that has a big profile and stands out. If pike are gonna come from 5 or 10 or even deeper water, it has to be worth the effort. Slow trolling is effective, but also relatively easy to do. You can target deep water, making it hard to get stuck on the bottom. Troll slow, which is power efficient for your batteries. And you don't need a fancy sonar with the latest technology. But it does help in validating if you present your bait at the right depth and the right speed. A live sonar works really well as you can aim the beam of the sonar towards the lure and basically get a live view of what's happening below the surface. A downrigger with a regular 2D sonar works fine too, as the big heavy ball of lead will show in your sonar and you can see if the fish responds to the bait that's behind it. In my opinion, results are the best if you put your bait close to the lead ball. If you place it too far behind it, you might not see the fish responding to your lure as it is out of the reach of the 2D sonar beam. Now there is is a lot more that comes into play when discussing sonar technology, but that's a topic for another video. Let's stay on the boat for a little longer before we focus on fishing from the shore. Slow trolling for winter pike can be a deadly technique, but casting is another very effective option. One of the benefits though from trolling is that you cover a lot of water, and by doing so you will learn where the fish are during winter time. This is one hell of an advantage, and that's one of the reasons why I highly 
highly recommend doing multiple techniques to become a more versatile angler. With casting you can mix up your bait selection even a bit more as you can variate the speed with more techniques like stop and go. Especially longer pauses during your retrieve can help either provoke a strike or get your bait back towards the right depth. When casting I like to use three different techniques during winter time. One of the main techniques that I use during winter time while casting from the boat like with slow trolling present a big profile bait at a slow speed above deeper water. For deep water the burbot works great, especially in the 36cm version. For more shallow water the 25cm or the 32cm roach can work really well, especially when you apply a stop and go. Another technique is so called power fishing. This is useful for when I suspect the fish are hunting a bit more shallow and I can work with higher speeds. Big schools of brim close to the drop off or in the higher water column is an indication that pike will be around. The biggest benefit of this technique is that you are able to cover more water to find the fish and discover what triggers them. Another benefit is the ability to fish in heavy wind conditions. With slower presentations you need more control over your retrieve and the depth you are at. While with power fishing you don't need to worry that much about speed or the depth, the fast and summon drops are not that much of a big deal. Once located you can always switch back to a slower technique and grind that particular spot. You can use heavier weights on your lures to fish at a variety of depths and you can mix up your speed. The 40cm eel is one of my favorites, the river roach and the herring shed are also excellent choices. And one of my personal favorites is the perch shed, which has been recently launched in 2021. Either equipped with a jig head or with a shallow screw with some savage balls attached to them. Last but not least there is shallow water fishing during winter. Yes you heard it, pike and their prey often move more shallow than you think during winter time. Especially when nature throws rough conditions at them with wind and heavy rain. Sheltered areas that are shallow can be more comfortable than deep water pockets during winter. Keep in mind that these spots are also spawning areas during spring and thus when the water temperature rises they have the urge to migrate towards these spots. You can fish these spots with baits that run shallow less than a meter deep, so jerk baits or soft baits with a shallow screw. I like to use the jerkster with long pauses when I fish water systems that are less than 3 meters deep. Make sure to often mix up your presentation and you will discover what works soon enough. This style of shallow fishing is also very suitable for fishing from the shore. You might need to adjust your spot selection as you will not have the intel gathered from boat fishing simply because you can't launch a boat over there or because you don't own a boat. It is important to keep in mind the aspect of comfort. Bridges and narrow passageways keep warm air trapped underneath it. Spots where fish can hide underneath like old boats are also a good indication that you can find fish. And as always keep an eye out on predatory birds like our beloved cormorant. If there's a cormorant around there's probably some bait fish and also some pike. Countries like the Netherlands or Belgium offer a great versatility in different water systems. You can fish the typical Dutch polders, cast from the banks, from bigger water systems or go completely urban. And trust me it's not only pike that are roaming these water systems. Xander love the city and also asp and perch thrive in these urban environments. If you want to step it up and do a bit of boat fishing without the big investment, a small inflatable vessel like the E-Rider will open up a whole new world for you. One of the downsides of winter are the short days and the long nights. After work sessions are kind of impossible unless Unless you hunt for fish pelagically in the dark, you will be surprised how active fish like pike, zander and also brim are during the night. You would mostly fish either vertical or do what some people call pelagic sharpshooting. The idea is that you locate big signals on your sonar and aim for these fish directly, cast around big schools of bait fish or cast around a certain area where you have spotted one or multiple signals. Most of the big signals you will find during winter, especially during the darker hours, are located above deeper water. It is very common for big pike or zander to stand on like 8 meters of depth above 20 meters of water. Obviously you do have to be a bit careful because you don't want to target zander below 10 or 12 meters of water. Because they have trouble regulating their swim bladder and zander can literally blow up when you catch them deeper than 12 meters. To target these fish specifically you will need a lure with a slim profile and a heavy weight chick head. The heavier you fish the easier it is to keep your lure in the cone of the sonar. I've been successful with good old monster slugs or 30 centimeter real eels equipped with an 80 or 100 gram jig head. Especially with a live sonar this technique can be a super exciting cat and mouse game. Fish sometimes are not interested at all, sometimes they slam your lure without any hesitation and sometimes you really need to provoke them with all the tricks you got. Especially the big signals on your sonar can be frustrating, fascinating and super exciting at the same time. It's really hard to explain to someone who hasn't done it before and if you ever get the chance to fish like this I can highly recommend it just to try it and see what it's all about. A 
must say I am a bit skeptical about the long term effects of these kind of technologies on fishing. The magic of not knowing what hits your lure disappears a bit because you can tell from the sonar image what kind of fish you're targeting. If it's a big fish, if it's a small fish, but even if it's a zander or a pike. Fish usually had a free pass during the dark hours, but now they're being targeted 24-7. Soon we will go more in depth on this style of fishing in a separate video, with more in depth coverage of gear, spots and learnings that you can apply on any style of fishing, during the day and during the night. We wish you guys one hell of a winter season, most important factor of all, no matter the style of fishing, is having fun. Results don't matter at all if you don't enjoy yourself. Go out there, enjoy the outdoors, embrace the chase and before you know it we're back into full on spring fishing. Subscribe to the Savage Gear YouTube channel, check out the other parts of the four seasons of pike fishing and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching guys, see ya!